So now in the previous flowchart in our introduction, we kept on using the term population and saying that populations are what evolve, not individuals. So I'm going to entitle the next flowchart Populations 1 as we sort of dive into this idea of what it really means to be a population in terms of evolution. So we'll entitle this Populations Roman Numeral 1. And before we go any further, I think it makes a lot of sense to definitively define population so that we really know what we're talking about whenever we say um, population in terms of evolution. So let's look at our definition of a population. So it's a bit wordy, and so let's look at it. Um, a population can be defined as a group of potentially we really want to notice the language used here, potentially interbreeding. Okay, so it's a group of potentially interbreeding organisms, so O-R-G-S for organisms, of same SPP, will stand for species, living in, so we'll say living in, the same area, so we're still going, same area, and one last nuance at same time. Okay, so wordy definition, but important definition nonetheless. So let's go over it. A population is defined as a group of potentially interbreeding, meaning that they can have offspring with each other, organisms of the same species, so they have to be of the same species, living in the same area at the same time. So there are some important jurisdictions that need to be followed, some laws that need to be followed in order to be considered a population within the realm of evolution. So this is an important definition that we're going to work off of. Now, we're going to apply this definition by looking at a specific study of populations. Um, this is basically what we're going to be doing for the next couple of flowcharts, which is known as population genetics. So we're expanding our knowledge on genetics and expanding our knowledge on populations, and we are looking at it all on an evolutionary scope and context. So what is population genetics? population genetics can be defined as the following. So another bit of a wordy definition, but a great definition nonetheless. So this is our definition for population genetics. This is when we as scientists study the genetic, study the genetic variability, okay? Remember all that talk about variations in our previous video? Well, it's about to show up. The study of genetic variability in the uh, populations, so study of genetic uh, study the genetic vari uh, variability in the populations um, and evolutionary factors. Okay, so evo factors will stand for evolutionary factors acting on variability. So we're going to be looking at a lot of those factors, and this is this is the key word in this definition, in my opinion, are these evolutionary factors. What things are driving the population genetics of the population? The genetics of the population, thus the variability of the population, how are they being influenced by the evolu evolutionary factors present? This is what populations is all about. So it's when you study, um, we can actually erase this, the study genetic variability um, in, uh, we'll just say, populations and evolutionary factors acting on variability. So that's a good applicative definition to something that we've just established right over here. So what is the purpose of all this? Well, I think the best way to understand the purpose of our population discussion is to look at one of the most important terms in all of evolution and in this lecture, which would be the term allele. Now, this is not a new term to us. We're going to quickly define it just like how we remember its definition was. An allele can be simply defined as, and this is not new, one of two or more, so one of two or more, so don't forget, there could be two alleles or more, um, one, or two, uh, one of two or more alternate 
ALT for alternate forms of a gene. So that's what an allele is. That's our definition. So we had like big A, little a. Um, that's the idea of an allele. And these forms, okay, these alternate forms, um, ac uh, they occupy what we call corresponding, so, you know, similar regions, we could say, corresponding loci on HC for homologous chromosomes. So this is something that's not new to us. This is something we've already learned and established. Now we're going to take this idea of an allele that we know wholeheartedly, and we're going to sort of apply it to a bit of a more novel look, and specifically focusing on populations and the role of alleles in populations. So let's look at another word, another term that's uh, a little bit different. It's this term called a gene pool, and it defines as exactly how it sounds. A pool is full of water, right? And a gene pool will be full of genes in the sense that a gene pool can be defined as all alleles, and this is the purpose of writing alleles definition here, all alleles of all genes, let me rewrite that, all genes, so all alleles of all genes in population, so there's that population term one more time, at any one time. So if somebody is studying a population and wants to know all of the alleles of all the genes available in that population at any one time, they will refer to that as the available gene pool. And now evolution, we have to always go back to evolution because this is what we're talking about. This is our theme. Evolution will act on the gene pool and thus evolution will act on alleles. And we're going to see how a little bit later. I don't want to spoil anything, but just keep that in mind. How is evolution related to every single thing that we're doing on these flowcharts? It's a big idea to understand. So that's our gene pool definition. We'll get back to that a little bit later. Um, in an allele, uh, the another thing we have to understand uh, is the possibility and something that we've seen of a diploid species. And we know what diploid is, of course. This is simply going to refer to, and there's an important reason I'm mentioning this, as each locus is present twice. Okay, Each locus present twice. Now, you can explain to me why, of course, because this diploid individual, this 2N individual, in other words, got one haploid and another haploid from mom and then dad. Fertilization happened, sperm plus egg, creating a diploid individual. Thus, they have each locus represented twice, okay? There's a hair color gene from mom and a hair color gene from dad. So that's what we mean by diploid species. This will be important as we move forward. So we're just laying a groundwork for our further discussion on population genetics. So that's what a diploid species is, nothing new. We're gonna be looking at diploid species within a gene pool. So another thing we have to understand about alleles is this other term called a fixed allele. Okay, so a fixed allele will be defined as the following. All individuals, so all of these organisms, in the gene pool that we're studying, okay, so we know what a gene pool is. So all individuals in gene pool are all homozygous, okay, so they are all homozygous. So they have the same alleles for the same allele. In essence, everybody in a fixed allele scenario within the gene pool is, let's say, lowercase a, lowercase a, or capital A, capital A. There is no what we call variation. There's no variability. Who's variable? The people who are heterozygous, because those people are carriers. And if they're carriers, there's this opportunity for a recessive allele to show up again, for a recessive allele to be masked. And that's all variation that's not seen when an allele is fixed. Thus, we refer to this fixed allele as homozygosity, okay? This is when we see homozygous individuals within the gene pool. And finally, the last and I believe the most important term of this uh, allele part of this population flowchart is the following. We will define and label the next term as allele frequency which from this point forward, like I said in our previous video, for purposes of simplicity, will be just denoted as AF, capital.
So what is an allele frequency? An allele frequency is defined as the following. So we'll put a definition right underneath it, just like we've been doing. It is defined as the proportion, so we'll say the proportion of specific allele, okay, so there's an allele in question, and that's specific allele, so it's the proportion of specific allele in particular population. So how much of a particular allele within a particular population shows up? What is its frequency is what we're saying. I think a good way to understand the idea of allele frequency is to look at a simple, very contrived, easy to understand example, which I'll do um, down here since I don't have much space up here. So basic example for allele frequency. So, so we'll write AF um, EX for example. Think of, let's say, um, a hamster population. Okay, everybody knows what a hamster is, and hamsters represent themselves in populations, um, and that population is present with two alleles, so hamster population with two alleles for, I'll say, um, fur color, so fur color. So right now we're looking at a hamster population, our particular population, um, and we're looking at a specific allele within that. The specific allele that we're looking at is the fur color allele. What do we notice? Well, in this fake example that I'm giving you, in this hamster population example, I notice that about um, half the alleles, so about one half of the alleles within this population I've figured out um, are uh, black, are code for black fur color. And another half of those alleles, since there are two halves to make a whole, the other half of those alleles in this diploid species, this is why I said diploid, those guys are uh, noticeably brown in their fur color. So simply speaking, my frequencies are the following. This is how we would write it. We would write down that the frequency, which is lowercase f, parentheses, open parentheses, of black, close parentheses, is equal to 0 0.5. That's an allele frequency. The allele frequency of our black fur color allele is 0 0.5. We haven't given a letter to the allele, but that's not necessary for the purposes of this example just yet. We'll get to that. And then, of course, by definition, if our frequency of black fur is 0.5, what's our frequency of brown fur? It is, of course, going to be 0.5. The big idea here is that the total allele frequency is always going to be equal to 1. And then there are going to be variation within that. If we have a total allele frequency of 1, wouldn't you say that that allele frequency is, of course, fixed, right? That's the idea of a fixed allele. We'll get into these details a little bit further. So right now, tons of definitions to understand. Hopefully you can apply them. Um, we have a basic idea of what an allele is, and we're going to be manipulating these ideas as we move forward in our understanding of microevolution. Again, it's all about evolution. Now we have a good, strong basis of what evolution will be acting on and how it will be acting. Let's see what happens.